Let's solve the last question from the JEE advanced paper in physics. We have a projectile that is being fired off at an angle theta and a speed v. Under normal conditions, when the gravitational acceleration is g, the range of that projectile is d. However, in this question, we have something strange. When the projectile reaches the highest point in its trajectory, the acceleration changes in this region, and it's suddenly given by g divided by 0.81. The new range is given by d primed, and this will be some multiple of the original range. We need to find that number n. So if g changes in this region, then d prime will be given by the original distance, let's call it d1, which is the essentially half of the original range up to here, let's say that this one here is d1, plus some new distance, which is, let's call that d2 prime. Let's figure out the first part of the range. This is a very typical projectile motion problem, at least to begin with. In order to figure out d1, I'm going to need to know the time of flight of the projectile. So I'm going to use that in the y direction, the final speed vy will be equal to uy plus the acceleration multiplied by the time. Now at the maximum height, vy will be equal to zero. Therefore, we're going to get the initial speed in the y direction, which is just the vertical component of this velocity, which is going to be v sine theta. Now the acceleration will be slowing our projectile down in the vertical direction, so this will just be equal to minus g multiplied by t. In other words, if we were to rearrange for the time, we're going to get that this here will be equal to v sine theta divided by g. And d1 will then just be equal to d1 is the horizontal range but remember in projectile motion the horizontal speed is actually a constant so we can just say that d1 will be equal to the velocity in the x direction which is just given by v cos theta multiplied by the time which we've just calculated i.e d1 will be equal to v cos theta multiplied by v sine theta divided by g. And because of conservation of energy, the distance d will actually just be equal to twice this distance if the gravitational acceleration remained constant throughout this problem. So I'm just going to write this down over here because I'm going to need to use that later. The d will be equal to 2 v, now v times v will just give me v squared, cos theta, sine theta, and then divided by g. Now let's focus on our second region after our acceleration has suddenly changed. Maybe we've changed planet all of a sudden. So we have the projectile is up here at some height and then it will be gaining some vertical velocity. So the first thing that I want to figure out actually is the maximum height of the projectile. So to figure out the maximum height, I'm actually going to use the values from this region across here. To figure it out, I'm going to use the equation that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Now the, the final velocity in the vertical direction at maximum height is zero. The initial velocity would have been v sine theta, uh, which has been squared, and then we're going to take away 2gs because the acceleration is just minus g, and an s is just this maximum height. We can directly rearrange for s, which will be given by v squared sine squared and then divided by 2g. From this height, our projectile will then be falling with the brand new acceleration which is given here. So for this region, I'm going to use just a variation of the s is equal to a half a t squared equation. And rather than s, I'm going to say that this is equal to v squared sine squared of 
theta divided by 2g, and this will be equal to a half. Now, my new acceleration is the new uh, g, which is, uh, let's just call that g prime for now, multiplied by the new time. I'm going to give it a prime here to distinguish it. So this, this here will be t prime squared. Okay, we can get rid of those factors of a half. And what I can do is rearrange for t prime squared, which will be equal to v squared, sine squared theta. And then I'm going to be dividing that by g multiplied by g prime. So t prime squared will be equal to v squared sine theta squared. Multiply now g by g prime is going to give me g squared over 0 0.81. And now I can square root everything. So t primed will be equal to v sine theta divided by g. And then dividing by the square root of 0 0.81, which is 0 0.9, I'm just going to be multiplying this by 0 0.9. Next. Throughout this entire flight, my velocity in the horizontal direction has not changed whatsoever. It's still going to be V cos theta in the absence of um, any air resistance. And I can work out my new D2 primed, which is the range in the second half of this problem, by multiplying the initial velocity in the horizontal direction, multiplied by this time. So I'm just going to do that across here. I'm going to say that D2 primed will be equal to V cos theta, multiplied by T primed, which is equal to V cos theta times v sine theta divided by g times 0.9. So, so basically this range is 0.9 of the first one. So now I know what d1 is, I know what d2 prime is, and I know what the original range is, I can actually solve the problem. So d1 was given by this expression, v cos theta plus v sine theta. And then to that, we're going to add 0.9 of the same expression. So this will just give me 1.9 v squared cos theta sine theta divided by g. And finally, I can figure out what I'm looking for because n will just be equal to d primed over d and pretty much everything will cancel because this here has a factor of v squared cos theta sine theta divided by g and this thing here has a factor of v squared cos theta sine theta divided by g so this whole expression will just be equal to 1.9 divided by 2 which is equal to 0 0.9 nine five so n is 0.95 if you have enjoyed this question you will really enjoy question one and have a look at this video right over here